Praise the Lord, everybody. Wow, it's just good to be here tonight. I'm so, I'm just honored. Uh, uh, Pastor Marty and I worked together kind of uh, many moons ago in the uh, broadcast business. And so when I ran into him a few months ago and he invited me, I was like, okay, this is a God-ordained moment. Because at the time he was not a pastor, and at the time I was not a preacher. So God's doing some awesome things, isn't he? Praise the Lord. So just allow me to pray. I, I come out of the Baptist church, you know, and now I'm a United Methodist. And, uh, you know, we pray. And he told me 15 minutes. So y'all pray for me. <laughs> Try my best. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. And we just honor you for our time in your presence. Help me now to deliver your message to your people, God, that we can all hear from you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, um, uh, my scripture, my, give me my phone. Let me read this scripture for you first so that I won't waste any time. And uh, while I'm doing it, let me acknowledge my sisters are here, both of them. That's a blessing. And uh, Dr. Jones, who is uh, one of the ministers on our staff at Golden. Very good, thank you. And my husband, who really wanted to be here, is working tonight. So next time you see me, you'll probably see him. Praise the Lord. So here are our scripture reading for the night. Uh, for, uh, comes out of Mark chapter 9, verse 49. It's just two verses. For everyone will be seasoned with fire, and every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good, but if the salt loses its flavor, how will you season with it? Have salt in yourselves and have peace with one another. For the sake of a topic tonight, we're going to talk about let's get salty. Can you say that with me? Let's get salty. Let's get salty. Amen. Everything has been so beautiful tonight. Uh, and uh, I, I think about as I came into this new year, this is, is this the first raise the praise for the year? Yeah. Came into the new year, it came in a little different this year. Some years you come in very excited because everything is lining up just right. And then some years it's a little different. But this year has been a little different, and I don't know if I'm by myself. But this year it seemed like I came in and it was a little, some heaviness going on. Things weren't quite lining up like you wanted them to. And as we begin to assess life, we have to look at our situations to try to determine, well, where are we with you, God? And I began to work on this message, and I, I thought it was a message for, to deliver, but I discovered that it was a message for me. I'm like, oh, this is for me. So what I'm giving you tonight, if don't nobody else get it tonight, you know that that was for her. You can just say that as you're going home, all right? Hey, man, where, where's my musician? Did she leave me? Oh, okay. Uh, just for me. Kurt Franklin has a song out called Just For Me. I don't know if you all have heard that or not. It's a beautiful song. How many people have heard that song, Just For Me? Just For Me, yeah. Most people, when you hear a song called Just For Me, you think about all the things God did for you that was just for you. You know, how he made a way out of no way just for you. You right, right? Kirk Franklin did something real special in this song, and it ties in with the message tonight. And I want to just give you a few of the lyrics to that song. Just for me. It doesn't go the way you think it's going to go. It says, he keeps on making a way just for me. Keeps on making a way just for me. Then he says, uh, the many doors that you've closed just for me. Oh, sometimes you will say no just for me. So I've been tested in the fire to purify my desires. So my blessings won't be just for me. My God, so caught up in myself, I couldn't see. The world did not revolve around me. So the storms are in your will so I can feel what others feel. God, because you did that just for me. You with me so far? And then he does something real special. Everybody's singing tonight, right? Everybody had a little sip of wine tonight already? All right, because I want you all to sing this part with me. He goes into the ooh-la-la -la part of the song. And it's so sweet and beautiful, but he says something while we're saying ooh-la-la. -la. So she's going to help me with that, right? He said, you got me saying ooh-la-la. -la. And then ooh-la-la. Ooh-la-la. La-la-la-la-la. Come on, say that with me. Ooh-la-la. -la. Yeah, 
yes ooh la la ooh la 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 he says you got me saying ooh i'm hurting like and then my heart feels like ooh la 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 you got me saying ooh and i'm searching like ooh you got me crying like ooh la 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 one more time i'm growing like cuz it was painful like and now my heart is like ooh la 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 amen so the pain i've been broken but i'm saying ooh la la all that god is taking me through i could still say ooh la la and that's what god wants to say about you too while he's taking you through that's my daughter ooh la la that's my son ooh la la i'm taking you through this thing so here in our text today let me go to the text uh, it's going to tie in all together just bear with me 15 minutes right it's a powerful statement that jesus made that our lives are going to be seasoned with salt seasoned with fire because the fire represents our test and our trials amen our struggles even our necessary pain because life happens and no matter how we want to control this thing there are some things we have no earthly control over amen we can't we we don't have any control over the coronavirus let the truth be told we don't we can't blame anybody for the people the loved ones we lost this year right hello we there's some things that we have because life will come at you we can't control these things uh but but god wants us to know today that everybody's going to be seasoned with the fire but here's the deal in the midst of the fire god's working a bigger plan for us come on now he's making us stronger making us durable making us more capable making us wiser more understanding he's making us more patient teaching us how to show mercy how to feel for other people who are going through because we went through a bend so everybody's going to be seasoned with fire and everyone's going to be tested with this fire jesus said that every sacrifice is going to be seasoned with salt now when he said that he was really quoting an old testament scripture because in the old testament the children of israel uh, were instructed by moses to put salt on the sacrifices god told them in leviticus every sacrifice you bring to the altar to the altar put salt on it and the salt was for a reason the salt was there because it was to uh uh make the sacrifice enduring to make the sacrifice last salt had a specific purpose and that's what jesus wants us to be he wants that for me this year that we can get salty again I heard somebody say earlier that we have uh we she can stay on her knees because she didn't come up in that generation where we had to go through because that generation knows what salt is all about. They knew how to stand the test of time. So Jesus is saying to us today, let's get salty again. So, uh Romans 12 and 2 teaches us that our bodies are uh we're called to present our bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is our reasonable service and so the salt then that we are to present ourselves in must be part of who we are if every sacrifice is going to be seasoned with salt that's what the bible says every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt then jesus said salt is good but if the salt loses flavor, what you going to season with? So tonight I just want to give you a few pointers, a few little information about how we can get salty again in 2020. Amen. Cuz there are some qualities about the salt that we must have in us. Since Jesus says that you are the salt of the earth. Amen. He did say that. So we are all supposed to have those salt-like qualities in us. So let's talk about the salt for a minute. Jesus said it's good. Number 1, contrary to what the medical journals say, salt is good for us people. 
I know, but too much of anything is not good for us. So what is salt? Salt is made up of a substance called uh, sodium chloride. It has many properties, many, many benefits. Uh, but there's more good about salt than there's something bad about it. And I see there's no salty food on the table tonight, so somebody's looking out for y'all, y'all's uh, best interest. But the salt can help you. Sea salts have minerals that are good for the body. They are good for you. Uh, salt is a natural antihistamine. Did you know that? Yes, you can look that up. It's, you look it up, Google every, all, everything I'm saying. Your body needs salt to properly digest food. Salt does something to the pH in your stomach where you can digest your food properly. Amen? Sodium is essential for a good heart, having a good heart condition. Mm. We need sodium for rehydration. When you sweat all day and you need to drink something, Guess what, that Gatorade got sodium, magnesium, and potassium in it. You need that to rebuild your body for rehydration. And ladies, let us not forget, you know, we love a good salt scrub, don't we? And we spend a whole lot of money at the spa getting uh, exfoliated with some salt. Ah, uh, yes, and the black salt, I understand, will detox your body. So salt has many, many good, good qualities that are good for us. So what then are the spiritual qualities of the salt? So we can get salty again in 2020. Amen. Number one, salt is a preservative. The, am I right? Salt is a preserving agent for perishable foods. Uh, it keeps the food from spoiling on the inside. Back in biblical times, they didn't have electricity, so there was no refrigeration. So they had to salt the foods and the meats to keep them. Uh huh. And so often, uh, we still have foods in the store with salt. Salted ham, salted fish, other things that are preserved in salt. So if we're going to clearly present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, what does that look like? that we would have that preserving agent working in our lives. So here's what it looks like. We are the preserving agent for our society. We are to help prevent decay and corruption. And we pray to God to clean up our neighborhoods, help the Lord do it, fix it. And he can, but guess what? He put us there to be the preserving agent in the neighborhood to keep the neighborhood clean, free from corruption, to get, he, he, he put us there to put, it, to put us in a place of influence so we can make some good decisions, the right decisions. Our president needs some salt around him. He needs some people who are salty in his life to keep the corruption down, amen? amen. Uh, the preserving quality of salt means that we quickly root out bacteria, and germs, because you know what? Bacteria can't grow on salt. Did you know that? It cannot grow on the salt. And it won't grow on you if you got salt in you. So hey, listen to this. Hebrews teaches us to lay aside every weight and sin that so ensnares us. We got to get salty, y'all, to keep the corruption in our lives down. All right? What's that second quality? Uh -huh. The second quality of salt is a flavor enhancer. You ever had some potato chips without salt on it? It just went right. It enhances the flavor of our food. And too much of anything, again, is, is too much of anything is not good. But Jesus said the salt is good. But if the salt loses flavor, what good is it? So I want to ask you tonight, what is your flavor? So, what's your flavor? Your flavor changes the room when you walk in. That's what your flavor does. Just because you showed up, something different happened. You said a poem and it changed somebody's life. You sang a song and somebody got blessed. What's your flavor, church? Is there anything in your life that would make someone want to live better? That's your song. 
Is it anything there that uh, someone would want to do better just because you came? They want to have your joy. They see you in peace. They want to have your peace. What's your flavor? Because we're all on display. Amen. Uh, what's your flavor? Uh, 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 when you go to work, do people want to be around you or, or do they just want to go the other way? What's your, your flavor? Are you speaking life into a conversation uh, or you let everybody know how depressed you really are? What's your flavor? We've got to get salty, church. Uh, a long time ago, Lay's Potatoes had a slogan. Said, bet you can't eat just one. <laughs> so is anybody looking for you to offer something that's salty? Mmm, my God. So check this out. Salt by itself don't taste good. It does not taste good. And sometimes we are uh, in situations or with people who leave a bad salty taste in our mouth. Amen? Uh -huh. Or somebody might uh, just say something that was kind of salty in the situation and you just, mm, it just didn't taste right. But the right amount of salt, the right amount of salt on anything is all right. So we've got to learn how to find out the right amount of salt to put in our conversation because Colossians tells us that let our speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. salt. Colossians 4, 6, that you may know how you ought to answer everyone. So let's get salty, church. God is telling us today that we got to get salty. We need to get salty in our praise. It should not be bland and humdrum. David got salty when he blessed the Lord. His hands went up. He shouted to the top of his lungs. And then he had the nerve to get salty and start dancing. And it was so much salt he was dancing, he danced out his clothes. That brother was salty, y'all. We got to get salty. My God. We've got to get salty in our prayer life. Drive by prayer. Two minutes is just not going to do it. It's just like fast food. It's just, it's going to hold you, but it's not going to give you no nourishment. We've got to get salty in our prayer time. All the things that we ought to be about, we just got to come up a little bit and get just a little more salty. In 2020, we're going to make it. Finally, the third thing about the salt, and I'm doing good. The third thing about the salt, I'm almost there, is the salt was, a, God said, Season every sacrifice with salt because the salt was a covenant. There was th a thing called a salt covenant. In Leviticus 2.15, he says that everything that you bring to the altar, your grain offering, your meat offering, need to be seasoned with salt. And that was for a reason. And the reason is because the covenant that God made with man meant that God wanted uh, something more from us. A relationship that was going to be lasting. Something that was going to be enduring. And I can prove that because he told David. He told David. He says, I have made a, co a salt covenant with you. That your lineage will be uh, kings of Israel from now on. Oh, let me give it to you, Pastor. You can look that up. Se 2 Corinthians 13 and 15. Gave him a he says, God gave the kingdom of Israel to David and his sons by a covenant of salt. So the salt was when you come to somebody's house back in the day and you would have dinner because it was about the relationship. It was about a business deal. It was about something you were trying to get done and there would be salt at the table when you were eating, when you would sit to eat dinner. The salt covenant means then that we are not to turn our back on God and walk away from him when things get rough because we got preserving power. The salt covenant means that we're going to stay in the race even though the fire gets a little hot sometimes because we are committed to what God has called us to do. The salt says we can't turn around and run, and run when the wind blows and the, the rain starts coming in. Because we got staying power that's ba based on something God has given us. Jesus said you got to have these qualities of salt in your life so that you can get your flavor back. 
You can make a difference when you walk in the door. You can change a life. You can change a generation because you got salty one day. Hallelujah. So, let's get salty. How do we do that? How do we turn up the flavor? We read this word. We pray. We fast. We return to our first love. We were very excited about him. You remember those days? Oh, Lord, this is the part just for me. We return to our first love when we were so excited about him. And everything about him was just wonderful. We find that place and we get in that place with him. And then he can do a work in your life to help you to do, go through whatever is coming your way. Because he is the greatest. He is victorious. And he wants that for me. He wants that for you. He wants that for all his children. But Jesus said you got to get salty. Get some salt in your life. And then you can live at peace. With everybody. Amen. Praise God. I thank you tonight for receiving this word. Glory to God. Let's get salt. Let us pray.